the rarest loft, the seven fairway wood. No matter the brand, age, year, these things are worth more than any of its counterparts. The question today is, the one you would find in a skip any worse off than the one that's worth over 200 pounds? Trying to get someone to fit you for a 10 pound club, 20 pound club, 30 pound club is exceptionally difficult until I get my studio. Guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. Simon, down here, Lower Hennick driving range in the simulator. And we're gonna put the seven woods to the test. Now, the big reason for this video is because I recommend not only to you, but a majority of my lessons to dabble, to play with, to see how they would get on with a seven woods. Mainly because it presents that loft at impact, which a lot of us, when starting this game or a lot of us that potentially doesn't have the highest club head speed will benefit from that added loft at impact especially off a fairway now the big issue i have with my recommendation is the price that seven fairway woods go for on the second hand club market they go for 30 40 potentially 50 percent more than their five wood and three wood counterparts mainly because of the rarity most pro shops when doing a pre-book or even online stores, load up on the three fairway wood, load up on the five fairway wood, because guess what, it's gonna go further, there's no question. You put a five wood or three wood on the deck, it's got lower loft, you're gonna get higher ball speeds, and that one or two shots that you catch well will go a long way. However, golf's not all about the longest distance, but more about the average distance and off center hits and finding a fairway and getting out of trouble. And when you combine these big head fairway woods with extra loft off a wet or dry fairway you're not looking for the maximum amount of distance you're looking for overall average through 18 holes now today's comparison isn't necessarily just between the epic max and the old callaway steel big bertha what i want to know is does that added loft even with the older models so you could go let's say the tailor-made burner bubble flex seven wood for example i don't know how i popped that one out of my head any old school seven wood that has that 21 degrees loft and has that long shaft but also has that bigger head design we'll look between the two head designs in a minute but obviously they're bigger than rescues and the reason that i recommend a seven fairway wood rather than let's say a five or four rescue because obviously they're similar lofts is because you have that longer elongated head which creates more moi which creates higher launch therefore is going to be all round more forgiving so with a quick price check we can look at some seven fairway woods for example and again I'm not saying go and buy the Steel Air Plus and I'm not saying go and buy the Epic Max or that is the comparison between the two. All I'm trying to do is find like a 20 pound seven fairway wood for you beginners that are thinking, oh, I love my driver, but then I can't hit anything between that and my six iron. This is what I want to show you today and hopefully um, uh, side by side, after I've hit a few with some slow swing speeds and high swing speeds, I can still recommend, yes, actually 20 to 30 pounds or five pounds at your local car boot is worth the investment to help your average distance throughout a round. I'm not saying the seven fairway wood is going to be your off the tee, or I'm not saying you're gonna need a 190, 200 yard approach into every green. What I'm saying is this is going to be your lifesaver. This is going to be comfort blanket, just so you have a bit of confidence and know that you could even punt this out the toe hill, chunk thin fat, 150 yards plus. And also let's have a quick comparison of just regular seven woods that you see on the market. And this is my point, as soon as it has seven slapped on the side of it, and I don't know why Callaway being uh, tailor-made, and it is down to the suppliers as well um, of ordering more or less, but it's basically printing money. I don't know why you don't produce more seven woods out there because it just seems like more people are after it. But as you can see here, for example, just looking through older clubs, I mean, I don't know how that sold for 194 pounds. And again, here's another clear example, 21st of Feb, couple of days ago, a seven fairway wood, the speed zone driver, doesn't even go for that at the moment. I'm pretty sure the speed zone driver, let's have a look quick check now. I'm pretty sure if my mass is correct, that speed zone driver will be going for the same amount 
as that seven would, even though it retailed ideally, come on, 169, we're close, 190, 186, 186, 180, that's wrong. Go on, I need a 170, we're getting close. 186, 125, we found a winner. Okay, maybe it's a tiny bit more expensive, but hopefully I'm proving my point. You slap a seven on the side of a fairway wood, it's just more expensive. But the second big difference between these two clubs side by side is how much of the face is present with the seven fairway wood. I've been told and I'm hoping I'm correct looking at the research on the Callaway website that these should be very similar lofts. But I'd almost say this looks at a dress down to the ground almost like six to seven degrees more loft than the Epic sitting here. Obviously it's high volume, so obviously we've got a bigger head, top to bottom. This is a lot sleeker. Again, more weight around here, going to give more forgiveness. But dare I say, the steel head just looks more confident. If I was a beginner and I'm thinking I want the ball in the air, this looks like it's gonna put it in the air. This looks a lot harder to hit. And I'm not saying that's right or wrong because I haven't hit them side by side. And I'd like to think the Epic Max on the performance side is more forgiving. But when we talk psychological, when we talk confidence, what that can do to someone when swinging a golf club on a windy golf course, that looks almost easier to hit. So five shots with each with a very easy swing. By no means my fastest. I'm gonna try and keep um, the club head speed exactly the same for all of them. And let's see the difference in height, spin and everything else. We're not looking for raw distance. Neither of these are gonna win if one goes further. But what I am interested in is my own personal feeling when swinging the club, but also the height and spin rate on both of them. These aren't gonna be the longest clubs in the world because we've got so much loft but we want that average gain, that confidence, that comfort blanket that we so require when starting this game and just trying to cut down yardage on the golf course. So guys, I'm gonna keep this brief and try and explain what the difference is between the two and is it worth a 200 pound upgrade? And then we're gonna try and nut both of them and see what is different because this essentially is my, let's say, um, uh, push slice swing, coming over the top, trying to get very steep on it. Basically what it's like for someone that's used to having this kind of fade swing and who would be after a seven way Seven fairway wood, I should say. As you can see, that club exiting left. Hands are going to be ahead of the golf ball because we don't want to hook it. And we need that higher dynamic loft. Now, what I would say is both clubs, I thought, did quite well in presenting a decent amount of launch. You're always going to lose. If you've got a negative attack angle, which you should with a fairway wood, you can't hit up on it. You can hit up on it on a tee. You can't off the ground. Both clubs, I felt, did well in launching the ball dynamically close to what the static loft is. As you can see here, 19 degrees, 18 degrees, 18 degrees, 15, so on and so forth. And this is why, by the way, seven fairway woods are better for your beginner golfer, or let's say slow swing speed player, because imagine I didn't have that 21 degrees and I had more of, let's say, the 15 degree, three wood. You can see all of a sudden we're then launching the ball closer to 10 degrees, 12 degrees, Obviously, I've tried to hit it steep, but I've seen excessively steep angular attacks and closed club face and pull slices. Therefore, your launch is at four degrees and no spin in the world is going to help you get out of that situation. And if it does, it's going to lose you distance. The Epic Speed Max, as I'll show you here, and put the big Bertha Plus up on the stage, was better in creating that dynamic loft, whether it's the shaft, the head, well, I imagine it is the shaft and the head because the lofts are exactly the same, um, producing a much higher um, dynamic lofts. These two numbers are interesting. And the reason they're interesting, as I'll show you the swing here, is both swings, or two swings out of five, with um, the Big Bertha Plus, I was actually able to achieve um, uh, sky in it, essentially getting underneath it, which I didn't think was possible. Obviously, I can hit a ball reasonably well and trying to hit, let's say, a pull slice isn't my go-to shot, I find it easier, which isn't the right word because I'm not trying to, to get underneath the golf ball, which again is an important factor when testing these two because I don't want to recommend potentially something that's gonna help you sky the ball. Am I saying you couldn't do this with the Epic Speed Max? No, I'm just saying I was able to do it twice out of the five compared to the Epic, to the Epic Speed alongside it. 
Another thing that I found as well is that toe and heel shots with Epic Speed Max were a lot more forgiving and sounded as good as hitting it out of the middle. Now that's all the bonuses I could think of of these two fairway woods. Epic Speed Max, without a question in my mind, is the better fairway wood. 200 pounds better though. That is the question. And those differences would be even smaller if I found a fairway wood or a seven fairway wood that was five years old. Let's go a 9.15 or 9.13 tightless seven fairway wood. I'm gonna try and see if I can find some, for example, on eBay now and show you. That's gonna be a very similar head design. It's gonna have a very similar shaft profile and the differences are going to be even closer. But we're gonna save ourselves, I don't know, 130 pounds, 140 pounds, because even though I would say and recommend if there was no price option, the Epic Speed, um, uh, to one of my lessons that money potentially wasn't an issue, we have to draw the attention that there's not much in between both of them. Yes, the launch was lower with the Big Bertha Plus. Yes, the spin rate was even higher with the Epic Speed, which is what we want, by the way, from a seven we would, from a seven wood. We want the launch, we want the height, we want the forgiveness. But though this isn't a distance measuring contest, overall, on average, and this isn't the most fairest test in the world, I actually hit the Big Bertha Plus further. It felt heavier, which isn't great for your beginner, what these seven wood woods are actually designed for. But for someone that swings it relatively faster, I actually ended up hitting this one further, which is hilarious because realistically these should be going exactly the same distance and we did have relatively sim similar club head speeds between the two. On average, we had 93.1 with the Big Bertha Plus, the Epic Speed, we had 92.9. So, I mean, they were pretty close averages, yet the ball difference is completely different. Why? because our launch was lower and our spin rate was lower with the Big Bertha Plus. Again, this isn't a distance measuring contest, but I have to relay how important launch and the right spin rate equals more distance, more than any 200, 300, 400 pound club out there on the market. It just means it's easier to find that right launch and spin rate for you guys, for the newer clubs, because we'll be willing to fit you for those two, three, four hundred pound clubs. Trying to get someone to fit you for a 10 pound club, 20 pound club, 30 pound club is exceptionally difficult until I get my studio. Those last two shots there were absolutely hit perfectly with both clubs and really kind of extend, really exaggerate the point I'm trying to make. Here's the Big Bertha Plus. What's the difference between that and this? You can see how much higher that club with the Epic Speed Max launches that ball. The launch, you can see there, 20 degrees versus the 14 degrees of the Big Bertha next alongside it. Again, even with the um, uh, above head camera, you can see how little that shaft lean is at impact compared to the soft flex and the MOI of that Epic Speed Max launching that ball higher. Hence why the seven fairway wood with Epic Speed is much better for that slower speed player. However, as there is always a however, what happens if you were able to get a nine wood? What happens actually, because let's be honest, the Big Bertha Plus for my swing and my club head speed isn't actually that bad of a ball fly. I would dare I say this seven, this seven wood would actually be better off for me in terms of launch and spin rate collectively. I would almost say if I was doing a club fit for a player that's swinging this fast, you would need a five wood or you would potentially go down to a three wood and loft it up because that looks like a two, because that for me looks too open to the elements. But for someone that swings at 80, 70, 60 miles an hour, there's no question this Epic Speed Max Club down here is going to work better than the older version, as you can see on the ground there. It's lighter, it's more nimble, it's more forgiving. But what happens if you found a Callaway Steelhead XR? What happens if you found a X Hot 2 seven, way, 7 Fairway Wood? I don't, for almost half the price of what this is. You know you're gonna need a soft flex. You know that you need the loft. So there's really not much need to go and get club fitted for it. 
So potentially go and find yourself a 60, 80 pound bargain and get pretty much the same amount in the technology, but all the forgiveness. So guys, there you have it. There's my comparison. Hopefully that made a bit of sense as well as helped maybe a few of you think about your fairway wood choice. If you're struggling with a three or even a five, five fairway wood off the deck and you hit the ball incredibly low, don't be afraid to put a seven fairway wood in the bag. And as I say, if you get one for 60 to 70 pounds, trust me, there's a long line of people that would be willing to buy it off you once you're done with it or potentially worked on the technical changes so you can hit a five wood off the deck or you can hit a three wood off the deck. If you like this video, leave it a like. Subscribe if you're new. Catch you guys later.